Hey, yo, what's good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the Road podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got Jamie the Great here. Yeah. We got a special guest host. We have the amazing Spider Tech in the building. Yeah, yeah, what up? And big shout to DJ Never, Never Forever. And we have a guest. We've had him on before. This was like yeah. during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And it was through Zoom. But this is like the first time we, you know, kind of been recording together in person. Yeah. Uh, me and this DJ, we've had multiple interactions on Twitter. Twitter exchanges. You know, all the some time. agreeable, some disagreable. You know what I'm saying? And, Always friendly. At the and we recently day. hung out in L.A. And uh, he was, hang out. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. was he was showing me parts of LA and different parties and stuff, and we had a good time. And um, time. yeah, yeah, but uh, I'm very happy to have you here, man. You're one of uh, my favorite DJs, and you know, you. despite some of the things I may disagree with you with on on Twitter, I do I do love <laughs> the shit that you bring up on Twitter. We have DJ Artistic in the building. What's good? Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you for having me. What's yeah, yeah. Like? What's good, man? You not so you in Vegas? You're, you're yeah. very rare, not very rare, but not not very often that you're in Vegas, right? So yeah, usually I'm in Vegas for more so private events. I'm out here doing like a yeah. black executive uh, convention going on called mm-hmm. ELC. So yeah, yeah, out here for a couple of nights. Then I head nice. to Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe has a, a black ski weekend going on. So. Wow. Okay, yeah. nice. So That's just, good. Yeah. You've been like you've been doing a lot of private events. Yeah, there's been a, a lot of private, whether it's entertainment, whether it's sports, corporate, because yeah, it's. Yeah. That's where the real bag is at. It's yeah, like the club is fun. The club is promotion to me. It's like yeah. I went to the club just to kind of stay out there a little bit, just to kind of meet new people and, you know, kind of tap into new scenes. But yeah. the club is never going to be my bread and butter like 100%. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. It's, a, it's a different perspective now than it was maybe three to five years ago, right? On the whole say, situation, right? I would say probably like even seven, eight years ago because L.A. is just different. L.A. is not really a club city for my lane, I would say. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's more so like parties. It's the monthly parties. It's the day parties. It's the brunches. But the club club where you know you're going to be here every Friday, Saturday is different in L.A. Yeah. Well, well it's, not di- anymore. It's, it's different yeah. now. But like the conversation we had. As far as the conversation, uh, yeah. I remember our conversation on Zoom, like maybe in 2020. Your yeah. perspective on the club scene. I mean, probably that was up till like 2019 in L.A. Yeah. was yeah. very different. You're just kind of like, yeah. how do I get into the scene? How do I get into clubs? And now it's like. It's not even that necessary now. It's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like a lot of yeah. shit has changed. Like you said, there's not really a weekly club thing. I mean, yeah. there is like industry parties and there is like, you know, still yeah. bottle service hip hop parties going on, but yeah, it's just sure. not the same. Like even yeah, when we think not. about it now, I was talking to somebody about mega clubs or just like clubs in general in LA. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just really like highlight room. Yeah. And uh, uh, <laughs> Nightingale, right? It's uh, still not, yeah. Nightingale is temporarily closed, so it's high. You still have the spots like ballet, like Dragonfly, yeah, yeah. but aside from those when it's like hip hop, it's Oh it's Poppy city. as well. You have the Poppy. Yeah, you yeah, do have Poppy. True. Yeah, Bootsy Bellows. So you still have a couple, but it's it's different. Like to me, the club is almost like an exclusive club. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah. 10, 12 years ago, somebody come to LA is like, where should we go? Like if it's Playhouse. Tuesday, yeah. Playhouse, Tuesday is separate yeah. club. Friday is Playhouse. You know, right. it was you knew. Now if you ask the average person, they like I heard of Dragonfly, I heard <laughs> yeah. of this and that, but if you're not in that specific scene, you don't even care about it. What, do you, what does that Saturdays. mean? What do you think is happening in the city? Like, It's just a lot of factors. I feel like just looking back, because to me, the whole bottle service thing really started around, heavy around 09 and 10, when it was like Wonderland, you had even the White Lotus slash Ritual slash my house. whatever. Yeah. You know, my house area. But a lot of yeah. that shit was influenced by Live, like Sunday nights at Live, I feel Probably like. Probably was yeah, coming from and, that Miami yeah. influence. Yeah. It was like that the hip hop Sunday nights at Live, and then it started like LA started being like, yo, we could do that shit. And then the yeah. music started shifting over over there as well. It did. I feel like the peak of like, at least for the hip hop Hollywood club scene was, I'm going to say 2011 to like 15. That's when it was. Yeah. Greystone yeah. Sundays. It right. was. Separate club Tuesday, so it was always Orator, Mark the Spot, DJ BAD doing most of those spots. Um, even Crown Bar was popping for a minute on Fridays back then. Like you had that scene, but then 2017, 18, it just started to change. And I yeah. feel like it got so exclusive and so different and segmented that then the average person is not even trying to get in because it's like it goes from I might be able to get in to I can't get in to I don't, I don't want to get in. <laughs> it changed. So now it's like when you do go to these clubs, It'll have all this hype and you get there and it's like, it's boring. Like most of them spots that you go to, yeah. I'll still DJ them sometimes because they'll hit me up. Funny enough, one spot we mentioned last time, wink, wink, they hit me up talking about, uh, you know, we, we might want you on. I'm like, I went just to check it out and I'm like, it's boring. I don't want to do it. <laughs> it's not for me. Do you think the yeah. the the transplant, like all these people coming in in 2017, 2018, you think that changed the landscape of LA nightlife for the most part? It's always been transplant. I mean, even going back to like the 70s, just LA's always been a heavy transplant entertainment yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like 
I think it's it's a combination of everything from real estate because even when it comes to just the size of clubs, like even separate club, even the way they had. were doing doing the floor because they they yeah. started making the the couches and everything bigger than the dance floors. Exactly, and that was like a LA thing they were like really doing. And you know, as we're as we're talking about these bottle service nightclubs, you know, there's always going to be like like three or four of them that are kind of like steadily yeah. killing it all the time. Yeah. But it's yeah. not as oversaturated as it is because right now DJ curated parties are more. Oh, for sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. DJ curated parties are taking over in almost every city. Yeah. I do I do want to want to ask one thing because I feel like once the nightlife died down, I would say about like 2015, I was noticing you and a bunch of the L.A. DJs were doing more of your own parties and yeah. doing that. Well, you guys I, had I, to. I like, yeah. You had to, right? It was like... Because they, wouldn't, kinda, let, they yeah. wouldn't let you in. Right? right? See, it was like... It was a combination of, of us having to do it, but then... Our crowds didn't like that either, because like the same way I mentioned it before, it's like these these clubs are so exclusive. Where like at this point, it's hella Instagram driven, so it's all IG models, mm. all dope boys, all celebrities, and it's like it's just not for any of my following or any of my friends and right. folks. So it's right. like it makes more sense. Let's go to this spot and throw our own party. It might be once a month, it might be quarterly, but it just makes a lot more sense that way too, mm. even yeah. musically. Yeah. Well, it's like you're, you're not trying to make everyone dance. You're literally trying to please certain tables. Right. Tables. Like, literally. Like yo, yeah. this motherfuckers from this place, mm -hmm. and, or like yo, Detroit rap is hitting right now. Everyone, yeah. So we're gonna go heavy on this but it's not like everyone's not really yeah, and, not and, cohesive and, like and what i've noticed yeah. is that in these la bottle service parties everyone that's there has an agenda to do some type of transactional business right. with somebody yeah. at the table <laughs> you know what i'm saying even the, in even, different ways even yeah. the girls aren't even there to have fun they're there uh -oh. for like yeah. every person in that club has an agenda yeah, yeah. everyone's yeah. trying to come up in some way I remember, like, I see. it's just like very weird. And something, yeah. something I noticed about your following, because I, you know, like we've we've been cool, man, since like OK Early. Player days, OK P, yeah. before Serato <laughs> Forums type. Yeah. So like seeing seeing your following, your following actually wants to come dance, right? They, they actually want to come enjoy themselves, yeah. And that's something I don't really, you know, I see people that are follow DJs, you know, they want to come out to their parties or come out to wherever, but yeah. like your people specifically want to dance. They're trying to enjoy themselves. Like they, they work hard. They, they want to play hard, and it's like they. It's not about the scene. It's not about I have to be around these celebrities and this and that. It's more so about let's have a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's also a wider range of music that you guys can play. So it's sure. it's actually kind of interesting to see all the changes that that you went through in your career over the last three or four years. Yeah, and yeah. how much I mean you're you're doing like uh, you did All Star Weekend, right? In All Star Weekend, yeah, yeah. yeah. Andy, so it, you're you're been, slowly becoming the go to DJ for like you know any type of like Black Hollywood or just any type of hip hop R and B related event like that's in demand for that, which is good. No, goal. I appreciate you. Yeah, that's yeah. the go. I feel like yeah. somebody jokingly called me the the Millennial D Nice, and I was laughing, but it's like <laughs> I was like that's <laughs> they said it. And, yeah. hey. I was laughing at it, but I was like, I mean, if I can if I can become that because it's. It's similar. It's like the nice, you know, he's repping for, for that that Gen X, like whether it's the hip hop, whether it's the 70s soul. Right. For me, it's the same thing, whether it's the HBCU era, whether it's the West Coast era, uh -huh. whatever it is for our age group. I throw in a couple from the 90s in there too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's great. But I, I mean, that's what you want, right? Kind that's of? the goal for sure. I, was I mean, did and, you stay, and, yeah. and, you, and you stay current with your selections too. It's it still is staying just current. Like, it's not yeah. just all throwbacks. So it's like, it's all, always about staying current, even though it might only be 10 new songs per year that really hit hard. Yeah. I'm gonna learn those ten songs though. Every but like time. you're not, yeah. if you're not rushing to like download the new songs when they drop nowadays. I feel like nowadays, I still do surprisingly, you do. Yeah. I feel like it's do it they takes, work though? That's the question. Well, I, I think it takes like a good like three to six weeks or longer for like songs to hit now. It's tricky. Every song is different. So so for LA specifically, yeah, a LA song that sounds LA that bangs is gonna work the first day. Mm. I said if it's a Chef Boy, if it's like a. Um, if it's a, a Lil Veda, if it's even a Blast yeah. type song, if it feels LA, sounds LA, and I have an LA crowd, it'll hit that first day. Now, trap songs are different because like LA is not a trap city. Mm, yeah. Our tempo just does not naturally go with the 75 I mean, BPM the same way. Y'all motherfuckers so. really stay in the 90 to uh, 95, 100, 102. Yeah. 90, 105 that pocket. Mustard, that mustard. That mustard. Elbow, it's elbows yeah. up. I always say elbows up because as soon as that beat comes in, it has a certain feel to it. Does. it so. Yeah, LA yeah. was like one of the few cities they do a whole, f they do an hour and a half to two hours and just stay in that 90 to like one yeah. Sometimes, four sometimes, hours. sometimes yeah. the whole night. Sometimes, because even Afrobeats is still right there. So you can go Afrobeats, 
two thousands R and B, yeah. L A. Mm-hmm. Even throwback East Coast can work good because it's all in the same pocket. Actually, I got I got a question. Yeah. Um, because you you do download a lot of current music. Yeah. And you do play a lot of things, but I wanted to ask specifically if you test certain records at at the dime on, on your Monday nights. Yeah. That that's where a lot of your testing goes. I do a lot of testing there, and the thing is, because the dime is a, a bar, so it's it's easy to play anything because there's there's no dance floor to clear, but at the same yeah. time. You could tell if the crowd's not, not vibing with it. Every yeah. Monday you do the dime in L.A., right? Yeah, yeah. on and, Fairfax. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, five years. That's five, years. five years. And the dime yeah. is like a legendary. Yes. It's like a lot. It's an iconic spot in yeah. L.A. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, it's, but it's like maybe, I don't know how many people can fit it's in. It's not bigger than this room. Comfortably it's, 80 to 100. You yeah. lying. We can, we you can, fucking No, lie. no, he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, <all right. laughs> It was me, Never, right. Cricket, myself, and we were in one corner, and I felt yeah. like we were half of the club. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. we were half of the club. I was going to say yeah. 50. They, like they, 50. They've stuffed 120 in there. That's yeah. why I said 80, is the max where it's like, I might kill somebody just, if I'm in there with 100 people. But but I mean, and there's no AC. I think we walked through the back because we couldn't walk through the front because yeah. there's so yeah. many people. But I think that's kind of amazing when you have a room of like 60 people, 60 yeah. to 80 people, because it's like you can get away with a lot more. You can create a vibe. When mm. the vibe is up, the yeah. vibe is up. Yeah. It's yeah. there. You're really talking to him. Like my, my whole style is like a whole conversation to him. So it's like a whole story being told and yeah. I can kind of go. It's a type of thing where every week is different because people ask me, like, how do you play new music or different music every week? But with it being that small, it might just be at one party one week. It's somebody from Texas' birthday, and it's 15 of them. If it's 15 of them, that's the whole party because 15 yeah. people hype. Right. I can go Texas for 30 minutes off that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So you've been doing it five years. Five years now. now minus I'm, the pandemic, but yeah. Minus the pandemic. Yeah. Now, I'm curious. Like, when you got the dime in Monday, that was yeah. you reaching out to them or they reached out to you? How did that work? So I was doing, like, once every month on, like, Fridays or Saturdays, and then one, one week um, – it was about five years ago. I went on a Monday because my homegirl was in town from Oakland. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, the dime is always open. We, we in there hanging out. It was like six people. And the, the, the bar, not bartender, but the bouncer, Rob, he's a big homie. He was just like, hey, uh, maybe, maybe we should get you on Mondays because usually it's kind of dead here. Mm. The DJ who we had just didn't show up one week because it, it's just been that dead. It's Monday. Wow. Yeah. To me, it, it made sense because Monday is like the, the hardest day of the week uh, as far as gigging gigs. So... I'm usually off on a Monday. Worst case, I can have somebody else cover it. So yeah. mm-hmm. I'm like, Monday, I ain't doing that. I don't like having Friday or Saturday because that's, that's where my main money is at. Yeah. Yeah, Monday yeah. is like a Saturday for industry people too. That too. It's yeah, industries. Right. Everybody who- It's very industry. Yeah. I always joke and say people people don't have real jobs in LA because yeah. everybody has their own schedule. <laughs> yeah, so. for sure. So they, it's, they come at 1230. Like, yeah. why are you here at 1230 yep. and two o'clock? You don't want to go home yet. Only yeah. LA. Yeah, but it's great for a Monday party to have like a capacity of sixty to eighty people because yeah, it's, it's like you can catch a vibe, and it's all industry, and then they'll kind of fuck with whatever whatever direction you're gonna go. Yeah, you can kind of have fun with it and do whatever you want for sure. You know, yeah. you you're very scrappy. Like you're always hustling. Mm-hmm. Like you're always you're, you're still doing Twitch, yeah. right? Um, you're st- still trying to do like these like uh you know these things on Twitter where you're like doing surveys and then you know yeah. are you just constantly just coming up with topics and things of discussion to put on Twitter that's kind of like you're kind of like the uh the musical Jerry Springer of Twitter <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Springer I mean the things that hit me a lot of times it'll just be a debate I might just I might be in the car with somebody and they might mention something about Nah, because the South was was better than the East Coast in 03. And I'm like, yeah. all right, was it? So let me go to Twitter. In 03, who was bigger? Who had the bigger hits between this and that? And next thing you know, because everybody on Twitter is from somewhere different with different opinions, mm-hmm. it's never just going to be 100% any direction. Even if it's 95%, that 5% is scrapping for, for that, their uh, opinion. Yeah. So, But you yeah. like to like... You like to create narratives and trigger, like have this conversation <laughs> yeah. that trigger shit. You like wow. to think, if, nah. if you, if you really look at so I have kind of like a journalistic style. If you if you realize most of my tweets and most of what I do, okay. it's kind of Jer- like wait, you said, it's, it's surface yeah. unbiased. Yeah. I'll say something knowing the reaction is going to get, yeah. but I'm not putting my own opinion in there. Right. Yeah. I might just say uh, the club last night. Somebody asked for this song, and somebody said this. I'm not saying that's whack or that's dope. I'm just saying it. I'm gonna let y'all say that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, the there's like a level of insinuation, but you always yeah, leave it yeah. open, and you leave always, it open. Yeah. You always play kind of dumb, like I, I don't know. I, I guess it could be this. It's, it's a good, it's a <laughs> good open discussion. Make it's, it open. Yeah. It's, a, it's, yeah. it's a great open discussion that you're having with you know with your followers and everybody else who wants to like yeah. chime in because I've I've seen some stuff, man. I think I think your one of your tweets was a catalyst for the whole Jay Z. Wasn't hotter than whomever type thing, Probably. and that went on yeah. for like oh, you're three th- months. You're talking about yeah. that even through Jay Z's reign, 
Yeah. In the in the late 90s, in the nineties and the two yeah. thousands, he was never number on top one. of the game. Yeah, number people, one. Yeah. yeah, people in Alabama and Texas, I forgot, was like trying to say Jay Z wasn't this and wasn't that. And obviously the numbers were different. I think a discussion that you had initially started kind of carried that. And then that, that discussion went on for like three months. Yeah. Like dead ass. Always. Yeah, because yeah. they were saying that DMX was killing it two years ago. 98 didn't say it was DMX. They was was 99 Nelly. was Eminem. Yeah. Yeah. Every year, like Jay was never the top seller. And they always say somebody was hotter. But they said Juvenile like, was hotter than Jay Z at one point. Mm. Something like that. Hot. I mean, it's one of those things you could debate. Again, you could again, debate. it obviously it yeah. depends on where where we're having the discussion about. If it's yeah. in the South. You know, obviously, juvenile is going to kind of mm-hmm. clear that. But yeah. if we're talking about everywhere else, mm-hmm. but on what, you, what you're talking about, I mean, <laughs> 98 was, was one of those years. Overall, I don't care where you at. I was yeah. thinking DMX is over uh, J from 98. But yeah. as far as juvenile, like it's one of those depends on what you're judging it by. Yeah, but, yeah. I really was annoyed when you when you brought up like this mixer tweet. Where oh, yeah. you said you were doing, it. I think you were doing like some type of a convention in a, a convention. It was Jersey like, City, and it was like hip hop, or it was like was it a black event? I don't even know. Was it I mean, like just hip hop? It, it was um, it was in the black CP. So yeah, and, oh yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is? That's just you know. No, I mean, it was like yeah, yeah it was in the CP, and then you tweeted something, and I'm paraphrasing. It was like. Why would you give me an EDM 900 no, Pioneer I ain't say it that way. No, uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing. Don't paraphrase it. Let me, let me say okay, it. Let me say it. Let me it. Yeah. Yeah. Direct I, have, yeah. I have the screenshot. Yeah, so yeah go screenshot. Ahead. It finally. Right, Basically, yeah. what I said was that in my writer, I asked for the S9 or S11 and that I said, as far as preferences go, usually everybody who I know who's, essentially what I was saying was that most hip hop these days who I know do prefer the S9, S11 over the 900. Yeah. I was saying, I said, the, the thing that you hated, I said, it's a hip hop versus EDM thing. Yeah. I'll say, I could have explained it differently, but but what I what I meant from that was not that, because of course, as you said, hip hop these days has been on the 900 forever, but the last couple of years, just from our style, most hip hop these days who I know prefer having the cue points, having the effects. Right. Is this You're a, absolutely a wrong. I'm wrong about it? Yeah. All right. A majority of hip hop DJs are on controllers. Now, they're not on fucking, have pads, though. They're not on they fucking, have pads, at least. They're not on fucking S9s. They're not on S9s. But, but if they use Ma- the majority, mixer, I mean, yeah. A majority of hip-hop DJs yeah. are probably on controllers. I they're mean, not on S9s. Of course. So, wait, they're traveling, of course. Yeah. No, no. That's not traveling. Uh, no, that's uh, like no. any club I, I, in a... I mean, I mean mixer-wise, though. In a hip-hop... In a, in they, most hip-hop club DJs, right, yeah. are on controllers. What? 100%. 100%. They're not using S9s. S9 is not... A club is not a club standard mixer. I mean, you're saying, and they they would probably have more. They would probably have a controller there than a fucking S9. But more than likely, they'll have a 900 there. So most clubs have 900 more than anything else. Yeah. Yes, most because you got to think of the yeah, people who part. are installing. The people who are installing the equipment are yeah. coming from a club standard basis. They're not coming from. Oh, this is a hip hop club. We're going to put a hip hop mixer. And the way the West Coast like. Club DJs are or the West Coast Cali DJs are, S9 is the standard mixer. So I give it to you on a on a West Coast Cali basis. I would say yes, S9 is 100% probably the go-to mixer in Cali at the time of that conversation. But I would say on a national level, it's probably the 900 or a controller. It has like to be the hip hop too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because if you think about the the S9 came out in what 2015 or whatever. Prior to that, at Playhouse, at uh, at Supper Club, all these they all clubs, had, yeah, 900. They had yeah. a 900. Yeah. Not only and that, not only yeah. that. That's a super. You go on the East Coast man. and even down South. You think they got nine, they got S9s the out South there? Be that. That's what I'm telling. So I'm, t- I'm yeah. telling but, you right now. I'll, I'll say wait, so, wait, but yeah. but so my argument was that. I was fine with whatever you said, but the fact you yeah. said it's a hip hop versus EDM thing, that's when I was like, all right, this is not good. I didn't like that narrative because to me, it's like, it creates a division. division. I get it. I mean, Do you understand is, what I'm saying? I get that part. Like to me, it, was, it wasn't about division. It was more so, so even when it comes to most DJs who I know who, who are hip hop DJs who are online, look at look on TikTok, look on anything from that level, Instagram. Yeah. If it's not a controller, most these DJs who are cutting and scratching have an S11, S9. Yeah. And mind, most of them do. And mind yeah. you, those those mixers yeah. only really came to existence not not that long ago compared to like a 900 type mixer. Been for, yeah. right, forever. The S9 is a battle mixer. Yes. Yeah. I mean, even the sound card in it. It's I mean, not, the it's, guy not who, in, it's not intended for a club. It, the sound card is horrible. It's, it's intended. Well, it's in, it's intended for Serato. 
nine hundreds. It's intended for your bedroom and for fucking the guy who designed it is a show. The guy who designed it, the guy that designed the S nine. We all love him and we all know him. Who's that? He is a battle style DJ. Which turntable is, is which a turntable is which is Jazzy yeah. Jeff. I thought so. Right. Yeah. So, so so with that, yeah, yeah. it's a pre, it's more of a showcase piece than a performing. Well, pe- performing it utilizes piece. the software that you're using. You're using yeah. Serato. Everything uses utilizes. No, no, the but nine hundred is compatible. With Serato, it's not made for Serato. Made specifically no, for but there, it. there's yeah. a Nexus One and a Nexus. No, I know, yeah. but they're not made for it. It's compatible with. That's what I'm trying to say. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah, but you could say no, no. But, but the you, Serato box is inside. That's what I'm saying. It's compatible it's with it. Yeah. It's a different. Okay. It's different. It's and not that, made specifically. Yeah, for it's it. not made oh. specifically for Serato. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. No, 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 no. I, mean, <laughs> I get what you're saying. They have oh. a point. They they have a point. But the thing is, like, 900 is a standard mixer, right? And then they had the Nexus One. They started putting Serato USBs yeah. in it. Yeah. So the fact that you could say, like, well, that's a Serato implanted to the mixer. But it's Serato based. They're imp- <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But the, the thing that I don't like is the division. To me, I don't think any mixer is identified to any genre of music. Right. I think yeah. all equipment is just what it is. Equipment. Yeah. And it's the DJ who defines yeah. what, what, who they are by what they play. So I, sure, the, yeah. the one thing I didn't like about what you said was I didn't like hip-hop DJs all of a sudden being like, yeah, like, the 900 is the EDM mixer. And then that, that creates this, like, this completely, like, ignorant perspective on the equipment and this whole new narrative that never existed. And that's what, that's what I did not like because I started seeing the comments. And I'm like, this is not, this is not reality. This is, like, <laughs> a, a completely, like, bullshit narrative that makes no sense so, so i'll say so th- yeah th- the only reason i, I even but I, I know you didn't yeah. mean to do that yeah. but i was just correcting it and i was very calm when i did it because i was like look i just want to educate motherfuckers like this is not you know what i'm saying I mean, hip-hop so, or so EDM the, thing, the thing is so uh before i said before pandemic like as uh, as y'all were saying most clubs have a 900 and i, I remember once the S9 started really picking up steam, that's what I love the most. And I realized that most clubs still had the 900. Even mm-hmm. even if they bought new equipment, they would buy a new 900 and not an S9. I remember asking several different club DJs and the sound men, and they always said that for LA, most of the clubs were more EDM-based and that they always, the EDM DJs, do prefer that yeah. for a channel mixture for different reasons. They said the hip-hop DJs, as you said, Jeff designed that for the battle style. So mm-hmm. a lot of us who had that style. That's, in, that's incorrect. But I, I believe you. They, they I believe though. you. I, that's, the but they're incorrect. Me, but yeah. They're incorrect. Could be, yeah. I'm going no. off of what the sound man told me, so. Man, they're incorrect. Either way, I mean. It's not an EDM yeah. mixer, bro. <laughs> I mean. And then there's not a lot of EDM shit in, in fucking LA like that, man. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, no, that, now, there, now there is. Wow. It's a whole lot. Now there is. When? Sure. In the two, in no, 2019? No. Yeah, no. Yeah. If, if no. not EDM specifically, still open format slash not hip hop. Okay, wait. Live spots. No, 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 no. Yeah. You're talking there. EDM that, spots, so even like, um. Where you went? That Academy. Was, okay. Academy. There's Academy. Academy. Avalon. Avalon, Avalon, Avalon is, is like that. that. Yeah. Club. I think is it called Club. Whatever it is. Belasco. Like, Belasco. A lot of those spots. Even uh, Exchange. But it's exchange, more so. LA. It's yeah. more so artist EDM driven than an EDM club. There's no EDM DJ right. house right. Uh, resident yeah. there. It's more so yeah. like Dior yeah. was having a show in LA. It's gonna be at Academy. Yeah, but that's not exactly. an EDM club. There's no EDM clubs in LA that I know of. An what EDM club. Call? I would say that's, like EDM that's focus. Consider, you're talking EDM about focus, you're, you're talking yeah. you're talking about musical venues that are that are that have ticket Primary sale EDM artists. Though. Saying like, like, like EDM, exchange. I would say more EDM focus rather than saying EDM. This is you know, all the, this whole narrative is completely changing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're you're literally saying you're going to clubs and you're saying that these are EDM. The sound guys are like these are EDM. You know. This is what EDM DJs want, but but again, I would which say, I get uh, it, but yeah. like I, I still don't know these clubs. These but are these are like it's changed. These are venues. Changed. It's changed downtown. But again, I would say now that the conversation or in 2018 now, right now. Yeah, now, now but I'm that, talking about 2018. Well, even then, no, the last six seven years, even even before pandemic. They, but now they're yeah. mostly EDM. Based. No, but but look, now because is, the EDM is popping, <laughs> EDM was not popping in the fucking late 2010. They always had they always had some. Yeah, we always had had EDM I didn't go to it. I've been like, yeah. like it. no, yeah. you you guys had EDM venues. Yeah, but it wasn't. There was no EDM clubs. No, not, 
What, what, do, you, what do you mean like club clubs? Like, you mean you every mean like, single Friday, Saturday night? You mean like, or what? You mean like bottle service type clubs? You mean like well, that? Where, or, where, or do what you mean venues like venues are you going to where saying. they have that equipment? I just mentioned them. So even like, yeah, Exchange, Academy. So you're DJing there doing a hip hop party and you're like, why do I have this EDM mixer? And they're like, well, it's EDM club. Or were you doing a private event? There? It, was, it was always more of a private event. Well, like a, a private one-off. event, yeah. the standard form of a mixer is a 900. No, because they're saying it was a, a primarily EDM focused venue. So because they have a one-off event that's hip hop once a month, but, but five times out the week, it's usually EDM. That's incorrect, though. It's incorrect. I would, it's again, hard. again, I would bring it back to mixers like the S11 the prob- no, the- and S9 are relatively new. Yeah, but the Why problem is that yeah, so no one in this room DJed before, like in DJed in clubs before two thousand what, twelve, eight, two thousand eight. The thing yeah, is, here's the yeah. thing. So, no, look, You're crooked, artistic, crooked. Hold up, hold, hold up, crooked. I come from the SL one era. I was plugging that into the nine hundred back in 09. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a, a new DJ like that. So I was I was around doing that. Mm-hmm. I used nine hundred forever. Here's here's the funny part. I bought the 400. So if you use it forever, yeah. why would you distinguish because it's, that? Because that was forever ago. That was forever ago. <laughs> it's different. My style's changed now. Yeah. The equipment has changed. We have stems now. It's, the technology's it's a different, changed. Technology's changed. It's different. Mm. I, I bought the 400 because I liked the 900 back then. That was 09, though. Yeah. Perfect. I bought the Pioneer 400, which, which was a baby 900. Yeah. That was a bare room 900. I yeah. bought that because I liked the 900 back then. That was back then. But you, you do yeah. realize there's still 900s and A9s in every club, like open format. No, of course. That's what, what I'm saying. Are. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, but that's what yeah. I'm saying. What you yeah. said doesn't make any sense because it's not EDM based. <laughs> it's still not EDM based. If, They're in multiple yeah. clubs that play multiple genres of music. Well, multi- you multiple, could, you yeah. could say as a hip hop DJ that you so, are. So I, I get that. I could have said hip hop versus everything. Do you understand form. what I I'm saying? That. Like, I get that he's part. literally only it's, it's saying things from his perspective. It's semantics. It's not semantics. I, I feel like it's semantics. It's literally... No. I mean, you guys, this is <laughs> I get it. a crazy conversation. This is an insane conversation. That's I don't what, think it's that heavy. I mean, at this no, point, no. I, I get what she was saying. I understand what she was saying. This for me specifically. The thing is, I use 900 all the time. It's just that in that specific instance, I had a writer. I said, if, if it's a writer, I'm doing a five-hour party. I want to be the most comfortable. If you have a drummer, a drummer, any drummer can, pl- can play with a kick drum, with a snare, a hi-hat. But if he wants to be the best he could be, he wants all his tools. That's all I was saying. So yeah, as far as my that's sem- like a drummer saying, saying, like, why are you giving me uh, rock and roll drums? I mean, I'm 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 really I'm really like a funk and soul drummer. <laughs> are you giving me rock and roll drums? The placement drums? is different. All the the drums. placement I mean, is different. Dude, that yeah. makes the no sense. Play, yeah. The symbol placement might be might be different for that. The setup is different. So all I'm yeah. saying, yeah, but that, I, that, I, I get I get that one. You understand point. what I'm saying? I, I'll, yeah. I'll take back that one part about I come I come from an era where it's like you know like I come from an era of DJs where it's like. We work with whatever we. I work still with. do. I always have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about a but writer. I would never. I, I would yeah, never. I would never say that one thing is more EDM or house or, or or lesser than anything. I, Someone yeah. puts a fucking controller on top of a S11 mixer with a CDJ. I'm not I mean, gonna be like that. Ain't fucking hip hop. I'd be like, yo, rock your shit out. To me, the I equipment think, yeah. is so like. I'm not concerned with the equipment at all. It has. I use. I, I use. I, can't, I don't so distinguish yeah, any genre of music to any equipment. I guess I think the, the main, the main, main, main point is that yeah. I was not calling it an EDM mixer. I was just saying that as far as a preference, most hip hop. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's, that's obvious. So, yeah. I'm not. I'm not I, arguing I was, with I wasn't your preference. Calling it an EDM mixer, though. No, nah, but I, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't arguing with your preference. I was yeah. arguing with the hip hop versus but, EDM. But, but I, I wasn't calling it an EDM mixer. I know. So what if it sound that way? So I then, right, so, for then that, and then, yeah. so what? Why would you put EDM versus hip hop? <laughs> as far as the, the DJs, the DJs who prefer it. That's all I meant. He wanted to be hip hop DJs who prefer. He was like, "This is my yeah. hot take." <laughs> they want to go out. I don't know about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's you. That's yeah. your. That's once. That's once again your perspective. I respect it, but I didn't like the narrative of what it was creating. I, I mean, a, a lot. Yeah. A lot of people do associate those mixers with EDM, though. That that that's that they was, do. Yeah. A lot of people do, man. I like, mean, you could say that after the EDM boom. I mean, you yeah. can say that because that's all yeah. you can really see. Yeah, yeah. And, and cricket, that's all it meant. Yeah. And, and, and at a what point, what do you mean the EDM boom? The oh nine EDM boom. When, all right. So, what other mixer should have been in the club at that time? There was no other mixer. The, no, well, what other mixers should have been in the club that had the same good sound quality? That's the problem that your generation doesn't understand is sound. What? No, 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 I, no. It's true yeah. because when we were coming up, sound mattered a lot more than yeah. it does now. Oh, yeah. So any DJ who DJs on an S9 in a uh, big club. Nah. No, no, wait, wait. Yeah. 
I would rather DJ on the 900 or versus the, the S9. I mean, the S9 because is garbage. The so- because the sound yeah. is horrible. But that's my era of DJing yeah. where sound was important. If you go to a younger DJ even now in their 20s or so, they don't even they can't even tell the difference no. between a shitty MP3 and a fucking wave Because they file. downloaded music off yeah. of YouTube. Oh, you got YouTube. That's, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the one thing you're forgetting is that sound in the nightclub, especially with function ones and, oh, yeah. and all of this shit, sound trumps fucking whatever like effects and all of this shit how's the s11 sounding s11 is great s11 is good but it doesn't sound as good as like the 900 the v10 oh nothing sounds like the v10 but a lot of people would like have six but the the people have you ever seen the v10 it's like the six channels yeah the pioneer oh yeah pioneer. yeah yeah i I know a lot of people that would be like yo that's a fucking edm mixer like why would you have that and i'm like you know what if you've ever heard it and like it literally makes certain songs sound better mm-hmm. it like literally improves the digital format no that's how i feel about the a9 the a9 is crazy yeah but this is this is another factor that comes into play because it's like hip-hop and all of this stuff but sound is really an important factor of hip-hop like no, you needed what, a sound system back in the day that was that shit was very 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 fucking what important. i meant what i was saying about the edm kirk is because the in every picture you, if you see an edm dj from 09 to whenever to now yeah. it was two cdjs in the 900 mm-hmm. so that was the, the the look because even you have brought up in the past where you're like when hip-hop open format djs wanted to go the edm route they went to two cdjs in the 900 right well the, so, the, the problem is, is so that, and hold on so that's why is it's commer- associated it's associated because if you look at any damn thing yeah. You see the that's 900. literally no, no, no. All, that's all Here, we're saying. No, 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 no. That's not it. You guys are wrong. <laughs> what? <are> you, <laughs> no. I'm Wait. Not. Listen to me. You just said. I'll tell that. No, no, no. <laughs> you guys are wrong because you guys are saying that the mixer was a part of the of the that's EDM same. problem. It wasn't. It was the CDJs and turntables. That's the that problem. Was, that that's was the problem. problem. No, but I'm now, saying, wait, wait, wait. You're implanting that. Oh well, the 900s was EDM. Well, okay, so then what should have the club, what, what should a hip-hop DJ at that time that was on turntables, what should they have used in the club that had superior sound? You couldn't use any of these battle mixers. You couldn't use like a Rain 56. What? The 57. That's yeah. shit. That's 57. Also, yeah. you put a Rain 56 in the club for a month, the knobs are all gone, the fader, f- is, uh, it, it breaks. It I doesn't like have all. it doesn't have the know. durability yeah. or the or the or, or the like the build mm-hmm. to withstand drinks being spilled, uh, the wear and tear of a, of a DJ that's of a club that's open multiple nights. Yeah. So I'm telling you right now, the 900, and this is we had literally had an episode with Mojax and we talked about it. How there is an era of DJ tech that was horrible. Yeah. yeah. And that's oh, yeah. And that's why I say the 900 mixer was oh. the only thing yeah. you could use. Yeah. No, I agree. I, with you that. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So wait, wait. So if you agree with that, and you say, "Well, now it's an EDM mixer," to me, I'm just like, no, that makes I'm no saying, fucking sense. I'm saying that most people associate it with EDM. Yeah, and yeah. that's not that. that's not even a personal opinion. That's yeah, everybody. but the thing is that yeah. you weren't outside, and hip hop DJs were using 900 mixers. I mean, so it makes I said, no fucking we're, sense. We're, I used we're not forever. saying yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, we ain't saying that. We're not, we're not saying, saying that. that. <laughs> we're just saying the reason why people associate the 900 to EDM is because whenever you look at pics, pics, videos, any 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 kind of media associated with that, that's what you see. Yeah, so it's not even a matter of personal So what opinion. other so I'm asking you what <coughs> other DJ mixer No, that's what I'm saying. Right. They're agreeing with really you. Isn't. There was no, no we're, other one. We're, we're agreeing with you. But the 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 casual fan, the casual listener, the yeah. casual No, uh, no, 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 no. Why do they believe that? Because of the pictures? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's media. And so it's your job to tell them <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> okay, then the, <laughs> It's on me now. <laughs> no, no. Am yeah. I wrong? Because people were using because you literally wait wait you're literally agreeing with me but then you're saying but they say that talking shit about o- wait wait wait, wait. yeah no no I'm yeah. saying 09 too yeah we was using pioneers 900 and we were using it all the way up to like 16 now. yeah that's probably when I started wait wait because yeah. the S9 yeah. is not a club DJ yeah it's literally like no one no one in the nightclub. Any sound guy in the nightclub would be like, there's no fucking way I'm putting the S9 no, in there. Yeah, they no. hate it. So you're talking about almost 10 years where the 900 was the go-to mixer. And it's your job to tell people that's an EDM mixer. Nah, because- I didn't that say was it was an EDM mixer. I no, said- no, no, no. But you just said the people 
refer people associate, who associate that. that. Yeah. That's why it's your responsibility to tell them, no, it's actually not. It's just like a mixer. And it was actually the standard in almost every club from hip hop to whatever. You don't double down that, on that yeah. and be like, yeah, that was an EDM mixer. Even though I used it for <laughs> hip hop for 10 years. And he got the 400. <laughs> That's the problem that I'm talking to you I guys about. I didn't say it was an idiot mixer. What's no, I'm not saying you did. I'm saying that you you guys just told me everyone is associating yeah, with yeah. And I'm yeah. telling you, you're not educating them. Because they were using the 900 with two turntables at a point. Yeah. We were yeah, using that for kid. years. Yeah. yeah. Always turntables. Yeah. yeah. Almost a decade. Yeah. We, yeah. we were using four channel Yeah, but you're not. You're, for a long time. But you're not acknowledging it to the, the people that are saying otherwise. You're not educating, is what you say. You, That's what I'm saying. That's why I felt. If, if the convo ever comes up again, I will. I will. <laughs> <You're clear laughs> up. It yeah. just. Came, I hope it don't. It just yeah. came up, and it came okay. up that time that we were on Twitter, and that's when I said, "This is not what happened. Yeah. This is not true. What like to everyone that said it, this is not an EDM mixer. It's a mixer, and it's actually the club standard. If it comes mixer. back up, I, I, yeah. I will uh, rephrase everything I've said. I, no, no, I mean, uh, yeah. My my thing is like, yeah. you guys can come at me and be like, oh, that well, a lot of EDM people use it, and they're like, but I don't agree with it. Then why the fuck ain't you saying nothing? So like, do you understand where people <laughs> yeah, was, I, you I, I don't did. want to you don't want to? Anyway, here's a question: Is yeah. are you not saying anything because you don't want to be disagreeable to the majority? That has nothing to do with it at all. So I mean, then why? That was two years ago. For one, that that yeah that yeah, but that, that, that has nothing to do with what yeah. I just asked. Then what do you why mean? not? <laughs> agree and say yeah you're right that is the club standard well because it's spicier to have EDM versus hip hop mixer I don't even think he was and that's why do that. that's why some of your tweets annoy the fuck out of me <laughs> because because, not, take. there, because right, there's an this, absence man. of education attached to some of it you you like you know I, I like the fact that you let let it be an open forum but I also like the fact that you can allow some education and some truth and some history seep in and sprinkle in a little bit. What, what's some uh, some other ones then? No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we've talked Bring about this way too long. <laughs> Bring them up, yeah, because that, that's the only one that we really went out of that. No, that's I mean, the there's, really there's a couple. Like, yeah. No, look, what's the, other ones? The, yeah. the thing is this. I'm, yeah. Everything I say, I, like, I'm very open to being wrong. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think I'm wrong about a ton of shit, but... I think I, your opinion might be not agreeable, but I don't think you're wrong. Uh, for the no, no, I mean, the, but what, what you stand on though, Kirk, and this is what people lack of yeah. uh, understanding, is that you don't want the history to be rewritten wrongfully from what it was in the past. Mm -hmm. People always look at the surface on the internet, so I understand why people come at me, and I, I, I understand. You know, they could say whatever they want, and it doesn't bother me at all. Like, it, you, you guys were like, "Oh man, they're going after Crooked online." It doesn't like literally. You still I was still drinking I'm your sure. coffee. Like, that was the last thing I'm I sure. even thought about for the whole day. You know, there was so, so many other catastrophes that I had to deal with. Besides sure. motherfuckers yeah. saying like I was crazy for not knowing Drew Hill Beauty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which I think is a great song, but it's not a bad song. It's not a bad song at all. It was just not popping in New York. But out of all the songs that came out in R and B that came out around that time, yeah. If we took a span of two years of all the R and B and songs that came out. I mean, Drew Hill Beauty. That's it's, it's pretty crazy to say that it trumps it's, all of those. A lot of those songs I mean, that came out. The way music has been happening, even with Can We Talk, it, it just shows you how certain songs age and how certain songs have different lifespans. Because yeah, even, yeah. To me, it is a crazy thing that we have all R and B parties because, as you said, previous decades you always heard R and B, whether it's to open the night or close the night. But because it got so segmented when it comes to these bottle clubs. It's certain clubs you won't hear any R&B the whole night. Right, so, right, right, right. But it's kind of crazy seeing how many R&B parties it is. And it's a whole different appeal. I feel like doing an R&B party versus the hip-hop party, the crowd is different and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it's, it's weird because I actually, I think R&B parties are, are playing more different music. It's like maybe then, 40, then, 50% R&B yeah. and like 50% everything else. Nah, I, 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 actually, I actually see more complaints about... It's not being enough R and B. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. Crazy. there's not crazy. enough R and B. Like, why are we hearing like City Trap. Girls or like yeah. why are we hearing Sexy Red or this shit like at, yeah. at an R and B party? I've heard that because I haven't seen it. Because whenever I do R and B party, I'm staying 98 percent R and B. I might joke and like like blend the hip hop beat to it, but I mean that's that speaks to generation too. I feel like because most people under 30 didn't grow up on R and B the same way. Right. They heard it, but it was like the biggest songs the last 12 years weren't weren't R and B songs. You had Boot Up 60 years ago that was huge, a couple Beyonce songs, mm -hmm. but 
R and B was not as dominant. So it's probably where some DJs probably do panic. They might just see the crowd and they, they went R and B for that long and they said, All right, let me play some future or something to get them back going when they shouldn't have to, but right. I just see some DJs panic in that way. Like for me personally, I think cause my R and B I study it enough to know I can go new school or old school R and B and keep them going. But I, yeah. I think it's actually the unpredictability of it. Mm-hmm. I think when something is just R and B, R and B, R and B, yeah, no yeah. matter what decade you're pulling the R and B from, it's yeah. still yeah. somewhat predictable. Yeah. So when you throw in a hip hop song out of nowhere after everyone's singing the words to like some R and B karaoke, you know, banger anthem, and then all Me, of a sudden so. blow the whistle drops or like <laughs> something crazy drops, you know, like yeah. it just takes people off, and then the energy, it's a shift in energy, and it's just it's it's a mm. further tool for DJs to use. Uh, and prove how they can control the crowd. Mm-hmm. Where we're like, oh, let's take this sing-along energy and now let's take it to another level. That and only kind of sometimes hip-hop can do. You know what I mean? For people who, are, who grew up partying into hip-hop, it makes sense because, yeah, like yeah. you grew up, all you know is like a lot of people just want to twerk. I always, I always joke and say, <laughs> a lot of my fans only want to twerk and sing. Either they sing yeah. along or they twerking. Nothing in between. Our dance battling, so I yeah. get it. Yeah. You know, I mean, even when you think of like EDM, EDM yeah. and like the way EDM kind of music and like the way the buildups and the breakdowns work, it's very similar to DJing a hip hop R&B party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You I need a sing along part, which is the breakdown. And then the buildup comes up and the buildup yeah. might be the dropping of a hip hop song or just, you know, another song catching people off guard. But, the, yeah. you know, it, it's they're both relative where it's kind of controlling the energy and it, and always um sorry. They're both relative because it's about controlling the energy and having peaks and valleys. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, and if something's straight, you know, kind of monotone the way through, that it can work up. too. That can work too sometimes. It actually, monotone energy works the best when it's a slow night. You don't necessarily when slow. Need, Yeah, when, okay. it, when you have a slow night, a good monotone energy is like the most, probably one of the most effective uh, yeah, things the, you can have. A two-step effect. Because it yeah. keeps it consistent. Yeah. Whereas, mm-hmm. like, if it's slow and you're going peaks and valleys, you yeah. can lose certain people at it certain times. Yeah, yeah. Right. And it's always, too much energy. For it them. looks yeah. crazy when you're like yeah. trying to hit a peak and everyone's just standing there. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like, but if you play yeah. a little, you know, fucking Return of the Mac, yeah. that might get the whole room kind of going at the same rate. Yeah. You were bringing up that uh, you've been seeing R. Kelly music coming. Trend. Yeah. So because TikTok's basically crossed over to like, you know, from like just the youth type app. There's mm-hmm. a lot of older people on there and there's a lot of DJs on there. Yeah. And like, I kid you not, man, this is like two days ago. And a couple of DJs I've seen just scrolling, they're, they're playing R. Kelly. Yeah. What R. Kelly song? Uh, Step in the Name. Um, I heard Bump and Grind. I saw Legs Shaking was viral maybe a year. Yeah. Year one, one of his songs was just viral like a year ago, but like yeah, with yeah. like the younger generation. Yeah. So they didn't connect that was like R. Kelly, R. Kelly. But there's a there's a bunch of older motherfuckers that don't give a yeah, shit. Yeah, yo, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. A lot of those cats I was seeing, they were all older older people. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, damn, man, that's crazy. They're still, like, I, I don't play his shit at all. Yeah. Like, I don't give a fuck who's paying me. No, I'm, I, I'm I was, not doing it. I was hanging out with Boogie Blind in, in New York for a little bit. And he yeah. was like talking about a party he has to do, like an R&B party, a grown and sexy party. Yeah. And I was just like, and he's like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm probably gonna have to do, a, I'm dropping a shit ton of R. Kelly. I can't. And he's like, yes. I can't, I can't wait to drop. And I was like, was high, yeah. you really playing R. Kelly? And he's like, he's like, crooked. Old black people don't care about that. They don't. No, I mean, no, they, they don't. don't. They do I not. Mean, they do not. Get the thing fuck. is, like, just to be all the way fair, it's like, yeah. it, it's it's so many different elements to it. It's like the thing is. A lot of them knew what he was doing the whole time. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a contradiction for them to all of a sudden think it's bad. Like, Have some so, more. Right. So I'll say for like my generation specifically, like when the first, like when the tapes dropped, I was a teen. Right. So to me, I couldn't conceptualize how bad it was. Right. I'm the, I was the same age as the girl was. So it was I was like, 11. For me, yeah. it was more so us seeing it like, because the girls in my high school class had older boyfriends. So right. to me, I saw the older dude as being... Nasty, but I also saw it as well. These teen girls, that's what they like anyway. The older I get, when right. I hit 28, 29, it's like yeah. 15 year old girl is fucking disgusting. Hindsight's yeah, yeah. a motherfucker. So hindsight made me see it a lot different. So then <laughs> when you get older and realize, you know, what it was exactly, it's like right. it hit different. And then when you do see, like, a lot of people, a lot of folks say, Oh, you only start playing them because of the documentary. That's the big ass documentary. Right. That documentary exposes everything and it makes you see it different when you see the the pain and how he affected people personally yeah. versus this kind of because it was a joke. I mean, we 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 all laughed at Dave Chappelle. Yeah. We all thought Piss on You was hilarious because it was. Right. 
We all thought it was funny, but that wouldn't fly now because we actually realized that he was really urinating on 15-year-old right. girls. It's different. It hit, it hit different when you get older. Like Our, our generation yeah. holds a lot more people and artists accountable about things. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if somebody does some shit, especially what the R. Kelly shit was, the, the tape was like 20 years ago or some shit now. At this point, it was 20, yeah. 22 yeah, years so, ago. That's crazy. Yeah. 23 even. Yeah. That is still yeah, that's more. Crazy. That's that is still more recent. So they're going to be like, nah, fuck that. Yeah. Versus like you know whatever like Rick James and them were doing Marvin back Gaten, in the day. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. it's so far removed from from that era. You know the R Kelly thing is still recent. So and it's visual proof and, it, and it's visual yeah. proof about shit. So in the future, when it like let's say in society, it becomes way more acceptable to play R Kelly. You guys are still going to refuse to play it. It's it's technically acceptable now. Yeah, I, it's accept- I mean, it's, it's acceptable now. It's not, it's not, it's not it a technically acceptable now. No, it's no, questionable. Nah, yeah. nah. People, it's questionable now. A lot of people are requesting it. Yeah, though. yeah. No, no, but that's still a minority compared to the majority of a room. I it's think. so hard to say because here's the thing: I've yeah, been to parties bro. that played it. Right. So I remember when the documentary first came out. I was with Kingway. We were at, at Academy. And he had a DJ who was actually a white DJ who played, who played, um, it was wonderful with Ja Rule. So when he first, it was crazy. When he first played it, right. the crowd was kind of vibing and kind of dancing. Like they didn't even care. But then Kenway was like, hey, yo, yo, no, we don't play R. Kelly. And then the crowd started booing the DJ. Like, yeah, we don't play him. I'm like, y'all yeah. are just singing it. But since then, I've seen DJs play it. And most crowds, the DJ knows the crowd enough to know that it's going to work. Right. For me, I know my audience. I know my audience, even if I did want to play it, right. like it, but I don't play him even if I've had requests for him. I've told people no. And, and somebody told me, man, we don't care what he's going through. And I was like, what you mean what he's going through? See, you know? yeah. so, See what you're talking about yeah. is, is different from what I'm talking about. I think public opinion yeah. on the reputation of the DJ who's known yeah. for playing R. Kelly is not acceptable. Oh, yeah, definitely. Playing it in a, in a room and it working, that's you know, that's a toss up. Mm-hmm. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. I'm saying if I was to tweet, I'm in a club, and tweet, Spider yeah. Tech is playing R. Kelly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Twitter's gonna be on your I'm head. Fucking that's disgusting. Twitter, though. Yeah. It is Twitter. The majority yeah. opinion on that would be yeah. let's cancel Spider Tech. That ass. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. care about black women. Yeah. He doesn't care yeah. about women in general. I heard right. I heard understand? Yeah. My homegirl said So that's why to, you know. <laughs> it would, yeah. it would yeah. go. But that's yeah. why I say no matter who's playing it, yeah. right? right? Or how or like how it works or how effective it is in a room, yeah. it has nothing to do with the majority yeah. or, or like but perspective if, of social media. But if you, but if yeah, you tweet, sure. yo, I'm in a room, spider take drop R. Kelly, and it fucking blew the roof off, half of the DJs that follow you are gonna be like, Oh shit. It's good or, to go. Or it could go viral and people could say that's disgusting yeah. that he's doing that. Yeah. So it's a toss up. You don't yeah. know no. you don't know what's gonna happen. Nah, I ain't no nah, you know? definitely never. And that's what I'm ever. saying is yeah. like if if you have sponsors, you're a big DJ. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you play R. Kelly and it and people hear it. You you there's a possibility you might lose your sponsor. Oh, yeah. That's big, what I'm saying is big. that it's not widely accepted. No. It's not acceptable at all. No, nah, but you, you know, have a lot of DJs. Yeah online talking talking about yeah i play it and what yeah type some stuff. of them brag about it yeah, yeah. like that that, uh, comics, that that video you guys comics. posted on you guys posted it everywhere you guys posted on ig but that video did, but that video see everyone kind of mistook that video yeah, they did because it was a video of yeah. what music do you miss playing and everyone heard everyone say r kelly and they were like y'all playing r kelly and i'm like no these people are not these djs are not playing r kelly right yeah but they're just saying they miss playing his song. I mean, they they know the the music. Yeah, yeah. but that post and they miss playing that music. Had DJs yeah. had the DJs that come comments out yeah. into them comments talking about I play R Kelly and what right who, who gives a shit. I seen a party in L A. I don't know where exactly, but I seen them drop Hotel with Ca- um, Cassidy featuring R yeah. Kelly, and that fucking place erupted, and I was like. <laughs> yeah, but the, but nah, that's the that's thing is that a, DJ, a lot of the DJs that were commenting, I still play this or whatever. Mm-hmm. I would yeah. say a majority, not all of them, a majority yeah. of those DJs are not big, like, major at that level. I get they're that, not large public somebody figures. Somebody right, right, right. figure wouldn't comment. That. Yeah, yeah. Even you know if they saying? did play, they wouldn't say it on. No, IG. If I'm a local DJ with under a yeah. thousand followers, I, yeah. I basically yeah. can say whatever the fuck. Yeah, I yeah. Want. <laughs> it's true. You know what I'm saying? Jeff and D Nice ain't saying that. Yeah, Skrillex ain't saying that. Yeah, when Jeff like if if any of the big time DJs they love seeing these videos because all they do is put an emoji. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. They that's ain't gonna it. say nothing, or they might they might type in "Wow," you know. Yeah. They yep. do this, yeah. you know. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Or who the fuck are you? I think, yeah. I think, 
there needs to be an understanding and I think it's still fresh right now. But I think probably in, in the years to come, there's going to be an understanding of separating the music from the artist. There you know, has, I, I think uh, be, I just like you said, because yeah. the thing is like time tells everything yeah. mm -hmm. and it why does. is you know and, and why is rick james and, and why is like right. shit bro but he, well, he wasn't canceled back wait, then. wait 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 yeah, yeah but, but the, the, the whole thing is like you know even I mean, diddy it's right, different like yeah. even it's even different. if it, i was to speak about diddy right now yeah. right we it's I hard to play diddy, diddy songs right now yep. yeah you yeah. you've actually artistic you've done events with diddy yeah you've done some like high profile events with diddy yeah you know, there's a part of me that wants to ask you know have you seen some, you know, oddly freakish shit? So here, you know? here's, what I, so look, here's what I can say about Diddy Party. So yeah, yeah. I did, um, he hit me up, you know, for a couple parties. I couldn't do one or two of them. How, how did he hear about you, by the way? I'm curious. Uh, from Issa Rae. Issa Rae is, of course, right. like, the, the goddess that she is. You know, she always put me on with everybody. So. Yeah. And you've been doing Issa Rae events forever. For 10 years now, yeah. yeah so when she was... Basically, fresh off YouTube, still trying to figure out that HBO deal. So yeah, 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 it's been that way. So she, it was one party she had Juneteenth when I was in Chicago. I couldn't come back and do it. And then the next party he had, she told him like, "Yeah, get artistic." So she's that type. That's so, dope. So she put me on with that. So yeah. with that one, um, the thing about that Diddy party is so, just me going into it. I'm doing Diddy party. So I get there. It's daytime. It's a backyard thing. It's all the way in Malibu. So he has the rock sponsored everything. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a, a legit kind of family type thing. His mom is there. Drake is there. But his, his dad is there too. Diddy's kids are there. His daughters are there. You know, Justin, you know, uh, King Combs. So yeah. it was just a, a big party. Tiana Taylor, just a, lot, a lot of celebrities were there. Chris Brown came through. So I'm DJing, playing a little bit of everything. He likes mm -hmm. the old school music I'm playing. Yeah. Play a little bit of West Coast. I obviously ain't playing no hit em up type stuff. But I play some, some Snoop because they, they all cool. So yeah. around like 10 something, I know that the... Uh, it got shut down, basically, from supposedly, I guess, the police or fire marshal, somebody came shut down. It's all in the backyard. So at that point, I'm like, all right, I guess it's over, but I'm just kind of waiting around for them to give me a signal for whatever. Mm -hmm. I started hearing people kind of whisper, all right, so they're going to Club Love now. I'm like, what's Club Love? So we all in the backyard still. As I'm saying, it's a pool right here. It was food, all that. So I could tell it's just a lot of, like, I'm not gonna call them groupies, but just women who love to be in the party scene. We're all inside, just kind of lingering around, and I'm right. like, Indus industry, right. industry types. Yeah, the ones yeah. who, the ones who I saw there, who I did know personally, either are really industry like publicists, or the ones who are you know aspiring to be in the industry, mm -hmm. whatever direction. So right. after like 20, 30 minutes, I'm just like, all right, so what's up with this club love type deal? So my homegirl who was there, Aisha, Aisha Irene, she was like, yeah, for club love, you have to get like permission to go in. So I'm like, where is club love? They're like, it's. Basically, it's, it's his house. You get past the gate. He has a house, a mansion. That's where we were inside the mansion and behind that. But Club Love is a separate like building attached to the house that's separate. It's like a separate club in the, the lot of his house. So I'm texting like you know the people who hired me, who, who I spoke to, like, hey, can I get into Club Love? No response. I'm like, okay, I just DJ the whole party, but I can't get into the after party in the same yard. Like, what is this about? So... I, I just walk over there. Me and my boy Billy walk over. You know, I just, just want to like, say I've yeah. never I've never heard a name like Club Love sound so eerie and scary. <laughs> <laughs> like you would think, like the name Club yeah. Love would be like, oh my Everybody god, everybody just didn't, you yeah. know, like come to Club yeah. Love. But yeah. the more you say it, I'm like, oh my god, this so, sounds really it's a yeah. whole different context <laughs> now. Really so, so I had no idea. So so I know one of my boys was DJing that. Yeah, he's type. He's the homie, but certain stuff if I taste him. He'll text back the next day. Damn, I missed it. You ain't missed it, but you know yeah, it's all good. But yeah, yeah. so, uh, me and my boy woke up. They're just like, yeah, you have permission, and I was like, you have a. I don't know if it was a band, whatever it was. I needed. I was like, well, I just DJed the whole party. They're like, yeah, you have permission. I'm like, I guess not. So, to me, it is weird. Like, I, I did the whole party for y'all, but I can't go to the after party in the same <laughs> thing. So my boy, who was actually, uh, he 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 uh, he basically has a modeling like troupe or. Essentially, he provides a woman for like the video. So he was there. Yeah. He walks up with like 10 girls. So, of course, they let the girls in, but then security kind of bumps him out the way. And he was like, hold up. They started going at it. He's like, nah, homie. Like, I'm the one who brought all the chicks here. Like, you letting me in. You know, I'm blank, blank. Security's going at it with him. Eventually, they let him in. Me and my boy was just like, you know what? They can have it. Let's go home. You know, I'm not <laughs> even tripping. So it's funny that people inside, inside the house area are trying to get in. We leave outside the gate. It's 200 more people just trying to get inside the gate. So wow. it's like, it's, it's too much going on. I'm like, 
I doubt we missing anything for real. So all that to say, I never saw anything with my. You doubt you was missing yeah. anything for real. <laughs> I mean, look, look. I mean, look, maybe I was. Hey, though, thank yeah, God for yeah. that because you're not going to be yeah. subpoenaed for anything right yeah, now. Yeah. So, so all, all I saw was like Diddy mom dancing with the fur coat on. Like it was, wow. it was a real family environment. So that's where the, did, the, yeah. like the love shit came out for Diddy. Remember, he was pushing. Yeah. yeah. I'm love now. Yeah. yeah. It was club love. Yeah. Wow. That's, so that. I, I, don't, I ain't hear about anything crazy happening, but I just thought it was wild. Like, how do you have a, a club inside of your house that people inside your house can't get into? That's just wild to me, but shit. Mm, so. that's, uh, that's crazy. When was the last time you did a Diddy event? It's been a that event. was like 01. He hit me up. 01? Oh, no, not 01. 21. Oh, okay. I'm I was like, 2021. Damn. I'm tripping. I was in high school. Nah, no, no, 2021. And then uh, he did hit me up. Like, he, he DM'd me maybe. A year and a half ago, uh, Halloween. Yeah. The, the time he dressed up as Joker, he hit me up when I was in Florida for Family Homecoming. All my friends was like, "You stupid! You ain't going back for Diddy party." But Family Homecoming, they hired me for three parties that day. That's, that's my actual folks. I'm like, I'm not yeah. gonna fly, cancel on them. I'm like, it's gonna be more of them, and mm -hmm. maybe it will, maybe it won't. Mm, man. Yeah, yeah, I've been hearing a lot of people yeah. that have worked with Diddy and attended some of his parties have deleted or archive whatever. A lot of their posts on Instagram because they don't want to mm. be affiliated to a lot of that shit. Well, here's the shit is that yeah. he, I, I heard somewhere he's like, well, if I go down, all these motherfuckers that I know that are part of this shit are going to go down. Mm -hmm. So yeah. are, are we going to lose yeah. all these songs <laughs> from from all of these motherfuckers that were like co-conspirators and part of this? Is this going to be like a Rico event or some shit? <laughs> somebody, ca somebody called a Frico. <laughs> 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 I'm there with the oh my, wait a minute. <laughs> the freak out. <laughs> but th this is what I'm saying is that there's going to be a point where like everybody's just going to be, you know, deemed a, like a vile human being or unacceptable to the standards of regular people. And the, th the thing is, is like Can't we have it. to separate the music and the artist. Mm -hmm. Because there's at to a certain degree. It's tricky. I, I think in almost I, I think like you said, time. Yeah. Is, is is the teller of yeah. all truths. Yeah. yeah. So like, you know, we'll see what happens in five, yeah. ten years. In the you know the next generation over. Right. Yeah, because I feel like the thing is, like R. Kelly is not the only deviant we've had, but I feel like the difference is that for one, he his got exposed at different levels from the videos to documentaries. Cause like on the flip side, like mystical, most people know that mystical has yeah. done what he did. You know, as far as rape goes, which is like the highest. Level I haven't of, even heard of that. Yeah, and that kind of yeah. comes oh, to yeah. point though. Yeah, that kinda, that's crazy that you didn't even know about it. Yeah, he got locked up people, for it the yeah. first time, and then he got let out, yeah. and then he got put back in for the same shit again. Yeah, yeah. shit. And that's mystical. So the thing is, with, I didn't even know that. That's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy that because because mystical's not as big as R. Kelly, and because also I think the, the difference is that R. Kelly sings about it. So it's like right. when mystical talking about like. Like danger kind of does sound crazy. No, in that bro. Context, the first, the but, first line on "Shake yeah. Your Ass" is I came in with my dick in my hand. That's kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said some creepy stuff too, but but yeah. but R. Kelly is like blatantly like like think about this. He was right. My, my mind's telling me uh, no, no, but, but my, my body's, body's telling me yes. yeah, why's your mind saying no? If she legal, why? <laughs> right. Like, but, but, happy, but happy people doesn't have anything like that. <laughs> it doesn't. So you're right. So, so some folks feel that way. Some Stay folks the name actually, of love. Some folks don't mind the stepping songs, but they don't like his nah, sexual bro. songs. And then he was. Then I he believe was, I could fly. You know. And then he called yeah. himself the Pie Piper. He's wearing a mask yeah. and shit. Like yeah. the he whole fed history into behind it, that. Yeah. yeah. The Pie you know, Piper. The Pie oh, he Piper used to like you know. Yeah. Link. Bring he used to play, play, kids, yeah, yeah, play the flute yeah. to bring in the kids and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so, he was I don't blatantly know, man. trolling us in person. Like, I feel like, us, yeah, I feel like he knew what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's got to be a point where we separate the artists and the music. There's got to. I be mean, a they point. did that with uh, Chris Brown. So, but I mean, two different. There's so many uh, questionable I mean, things. Two different. That's, like, two different. That's that PR working. Yeah, PR on top. Of, I mean, it, but one yeah. is, you know, I mean, both things are not right. Yeah, but if you really yeah. weigh in, it, yes, one is probably way worse than the other one. It's levels to it. Then it's mm -hmm. to me with R. Kelly too. He kept getting away with things. Then like, he doubled down. Ninety five was him and Aaliyah. Then O two was the tape. The tape. And it's, it keeps on happening. And then he, he didn't get caught up to like twenty twenty. Yeah, no, so he, he got twenty caught years up back after. Then. No, he yeah. got caught up then. He got caught up, but he didn't go to jail for. But it. he didn't go to jail. Yeah, so I'm yeah. saying when R. Kelly dies, you think it's it's done? Then we could start playing his music. Uh, or how do you feel? What if all the proceeds go to the victims? Somebody mentioned that too. They said if the proceeds go to the victims, people might have an excuse to play it. I still ain't gonna play it, but I mean, yeah. some people might feel I more justified. I feel like, you know, what I said with the Rick James shit, 
I feel like maybe the generation after not what's what's the generation was it G- generation Z? Z? Alpha Gen- Z is after us, and then the ones after Alpha's that. after them. Yeah, so yeah. I think maybe like Alpha generation they'll probably play it. I mean, bro, if you really want to split hairs, Elvis was what homegirl. I don't play no, Elvis. No, yeah, Elvis. Elvis. Yeah, and he's like still an Elvis iconic. What, 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 but what but they say about the man, John Wayne? Here's the funny so, thing of what what you're yeah. saying is that. People during the seventies and eighties knew what the fuck was no, going on. They no. started it, and they were still okay. playing that shit. Wait, fifties is way different. It, okay, what I'm saying, people knew about. I mean, things it, back wait, you're then. saying Rick James was way well, different? Well, no, no, the, no, no, no. What, what, what I'm trying oh, to say yeah. is that the way that people consume news was completely different. It wasn't in your face twenty four seven type mm-hmm. thing. The way news is now, bro, we get news everywhere. We get news on our phones. We go into apps. We get the news there. You know, we hear about some fucking news everywhere, bro. So it's a lot different than like 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you know, where they would read about it in the newspaper or, you know, a real quick blurb on on, on, on the TV. So it's an entirely different context in the way people consume or really di- digested that type of news. I agree and I disagree. Okay. I, 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 I think you're right, but I think the public's opinion is way louder oh, for on sure. social media. Yeah. Than social it is. media makes it different. So I yeah, mean, yeah. yeah. So that yeah. the involvement of the public opinion being yes. amplified on social media, you know, that for celebrities is like a jaunting experience. Yeah. Because when you're used to getting millions and billions amount of love, and then all of a sudden hundreds of thousands of people are like, you know, right. trying to cancel you hmm. and destroy your whole legacy. Yeah. I think that's the scariest thing for these these whatever Word. these artists or celebrities that are having to go through it. Yeah, because the they wouldn't have really heard that at all. No. Right in the eighties yeah. or seventies. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's it's a combination. It's, it's everything with, with that along with just morality evolving throughout the decades. Because yeah. I mean, even even in the eighties, they said eighties and nineties that it was just a Yo, common it was thing. A lot of shit. Everything from <laughs> like because. Rick James was just a joke. It was just like, ha ha, he hit it with a crack pipe type deal. Even when it came to like R. Kelly back then, like people told me, well, yeah, well, yeah. well, my mama had a boyfriend who was thirty when she was fifteen. It was just accepted more too. So it's everything combined. It's like there's a lot more me accountability. Too. Accountability yeah. plus me too plus social media is just the perfect yeah. storm for cancellation. Yeah, I I think I don't know. I think I think it's <laughs> tough because I think I agree yeah. with what you're saying. Yeah, it just in it's not a sustainable argument. Because of time, that's the thing. It's like no, it feels fresh yeah. now, and it's involved. And the thing is, the majority of everybody, like you said, the the majority of public opinion is that this is wrong. So yeah. even if we were to say this is right, we can't really do it and like try to like destroy our careers and saying, mm-hmm. you know, this is actually I disagree with that because it's like yo, like, how could you do that? They could literally take a clip and. Yep. And post it and destroy your whole career. Right. Mm. So I think, I think at some point, you know, like we're gonna have to have to understand that the music's gonna be there and people are gonna play it, and there's gonna be a generation of people that don't care about it. Yeah. As much. I think what, yeah, of, I always say this. Yeah, I think what Rick real. James did was one of the most vile things. He held a, oh. a woman hostage yeah. and fucking yeah. r- raped her, tortured her, and everything like that. And you yeah. know, but it's okay to play fucking yeah. super I mean, freak super right freak. now, right? <laughs> kind of crazy. Or give it to me, baby. Yeah, kind of crazy. Anything. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, you know, artistic spider tech. It's yeah. uh, it's so good to have you guys here on the show. Yes, artistic. Sir. I'm glad we could sit down and for sure and just talk and you know in have, person. In person. Finally, <laughs> go at it in person. But you know yeah. what? Like yeah. I know I know we disagree and we get into it and everything, but it's like yeah. it's really great to have you here mm-hmm. and to like just shoot the shit with you and. And talk shit with you and Spider Tick. Thanks for sin- yeah, sitting sitting with us and everything no like that. Yeah, appreciate. It. I just want to let you know, like I, you know, despite all our disagreements, <laughs> I'm actually like one of your biggest fans, and I, yeah, I, I, I love what that. you do. I love what you've built, you know, on your own, and uh, and where your career is at right now. And I'm just really when I see you, when I see you shining and doing the private events and and doing what you do and seeing clips of your recap videos, I just love where you're going with it, and I, I feel like yeah. you really did it your way. Yeah, you know I what I'm saying. That. And, yeah, uh, it's great to have awesome you here, about. brother. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, man. Like, I'm a very, very big fan of yours, only because I've known you so damn long. It's been forever. So, like, now. to yeah. see that journey, and even when you were po- you know, even when you were doing like the message boards on OK Player, it's still right no, yeah. like, the way that you approach and the way you talk about music is very nerdy because everybody was nerdy on there <laughs> and really passionate yeah. about music. Yeah, you carry that in a way in, in into now. 
mm-hmm. and the the fact that you bother to educate people about the music that you love and appreciate and the nuances of it all is really, really great and mm-hmm. really important. Yeah. I feel I like. I appreciate you for that. Yeah. So. I feel the same way like these two gentlemen just said, but just to close this out, just don't ever say everyday people is from LA again. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I genuinely thought it was the, the thing is I, I, I watched the episode when I'm on here and whatever you know when you're driving you hear stuff I heard him saying something about when he started it in LA I probably heard him say yeah. when I started it in LA yeah. meaning the LA version of yes. it that, uh, yeah. that's fine but yeah, yeah. But just, I, left, I know that's don't New York say, yeah. I'm gonna go down for my boy right, just don't right. say that don't say Whoa. Whoa. Oh, wait a minute pause, pause it yeah. club love hashtag club, welcome to club love welcome to club love <laughs> And what we're trying yeah, to say, artistic, yeah. is you're invited to our club like, yeah. anytime. So just the bouncer won't even stop. <laughs> the bouncer's not gonna stop me. He ain't gonna search me. You're gonna put the there red carpet. <laughs> no, it's, it's appreciated. Thank y'all for having me on here. Yeah. It's my favorite podcast. Um, yeah, yeah. always I listening. It. I'll be playing it in the car, and I'll be talking to y'all in the car. Like, oh, man, how, how you gonna say that? But y'all can't hear me. Obviously, so that's the way it is. So, yeah. 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 If you lived in Vegas, yeah. I would actually have you like on like way more often. I would, yeah, like, we. Let's have him he, on he's more. like, man, yeah. I would ha- I would have artistic on a heartbeat yeah. for episodes i just so need I someone that. else yeah. that was around at the time outside yeah. as like the mediator as me because i sound yeah. crazy these guys like no no <laughs> look, look, Crooked, what are you talking gap, about yeah gen a's millennial oh my beef god all the time. Yeah. <laughs> what are they yeah. saying yeah. all right no i appreciate right, y'all for having yeah. me on here so, yeah yeah thank shout to artistic thank you so much man yeah. thank you appreciate y'all though. If you want to watch more episodes from Road Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace.